If you're planning on taking a trip to Europe, one option that I would definitely consider is traveling by train. When I was 18, I decided to take a three month trip to Europe. There are a few things I wish I had known before I went on my trip that could have made things go a lot better. So I'm gonna share with you some of those tips right now. Traveling by train in Europe is incredible. It gives you the opportunity to soak in the countryside like no other method of travel. If you're thinking about traveling in Europe by train, something you should be aware of are the train passes that are available. So the primary company that offers train passes is known in the US as Eurail and then in the European Union as Interrail. If you are anywhere outside of the European Union, you'll want to visit Eurail's website where you can learn about the passes they offer. But I wanna give you just a quick overview of what they provide so that you can get an idea for what might be suitable for the trip that you're planning. So one of the most popular options that Uriel offers is called their Global Pass. And this is actually what I ended up going with myself. It is essentially a pass that gives you three months of unlimited train travel. The Global Pass can get you to over 40,000 different destinations in Europe. It allows you to make up your route as you go, as opposed to having to schedule all of your tickets in advance. So I was really drawn to the idea of this. I thought it would be cool to make up my route as I went. And so this pass allowed me to do that really easily. In addition to the Global Pass, they offer other passes, such as the 10 days and two months pass. What this means is that within a two month period, period, you have 10 days that you can travel as much as you want, but you just have to decide when you want to spend a day and then try and squeeze in as much travel as you can on that one day. In addition to those passes, they also have single country passes that are a lot cheaper, but just let you travel around one country as much as you want. Now let's talk about some of the pros and cons of going with one of these train pass options. Like I mentioned previously, one of the most obvious benefits of going with one of these train passes is that they allow you a lot of freedom just to improvise your route. I had three months of time to fill and trying to map out a route for three months for me just seemed like a whole lot of work. And I, di I didn't really know what places I would like or what places I wanted to spend more time in. And so going with that global pass option gave me the freedom just to take it at my own pace and just decide where I wanted to go in the moment, which I thought was really cool. Another benefit is you can skip the ticket counters more often than not when you have one of these passes. It just makes the whole process of boarding and traveling on a train a lot smoother because the ticket conductor can just come to you right in your seat and you just show them your pass and you're good to go. One of the drawbacks to these passes is that even with the pass, there's still a little bit of work that you have to do sometimes when you're traveling with them. Some high-speed trains or sleeper trains require reservations in advance, even with a pass. What that means is that you may need to show up to a train station a day or so early just to get those reservations locked in, and there may be a small fee associated with those reservations. The fee typically ranges from around three to 15 euros or so for reservations, but it can be higher for specific and highly popular routes. So the countries where you're most likely gonna need to book your seats in advance or get reservations are France, Spain, and Italy. So keep that in mind as you make your plans. Another con to going with these passes is that you could potentially end up losing money by using them. Say you buy a pass for unlimited travel for three months, but you end up only traveling, say, 10 days out of that three month period. Well, you could have saved yourself a lot of money just by going with a shorter pass or simply by booking your tickets in advance or just maybe even buying your tickets there as you went along. If you're not planning on doing a ton of travel, then one of those passes may not be the best option for you. Lastly, I just wanna cover the price really quick for those passes, what you can kind of expect. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here because it's gonna vary greatly just depending on the amount of time you plan to travel and where you're going. But on the higher end of the spectrum, a Eurail pass can end up costing you as much as $1,115. On the lower end of the spectrum for say like a single day ticket or an unlimited travel for a few days in one country, you'd be looking more at something around $260 on the low end. Okay, so we've covered passes. Now let's talk about the next option. If you don't want to go with a pass, another thing you could do is simply buy your train tickets as you go. This option gives you tons of freedom just to make up your route as you go. You also don't have to worry about using up all of your travel days from a travel 
travel pass if you got one of those. So it's a nice low pressure way to travel Europe and still maintain that ability to go where you want when you want. The main drawback to purchasing tickets as you go is that they can end up being more expensive. So the prices for train tickets in Europe are variable, which means that depending on when you buy them, the price may be lower or higher. Just like plane tickets, if you buy a ticket for a plane in advance, it's gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper than if you buy it last minute. And so the same is to be said now of tickets for trains in Europe. So the last option that you have for traveling Europe by train would be to just book all of your trains in advance. Some of the benefits of this are that you don't have to worry about trains being fully booked and not being able to, to go somewhere on one of the dates that you have available. You may be able to save some money because again, you'll be securing those lower rates by purchasing your tickets early. Train tickets usually go on sale around 90 days before the departure date of the train. Keep that in mind and try to jump on those tickets as soon as they become available. Traveling with pre-purchase tickets is really ideal for someone who has a limited amount of time to travel and very specific things that you wanna see. So if you already have a very clear route in your mind of what you wanna do and see, then purchasing those tickets in advance is probably gonna be your best option in the end. One of the drawbacks though of pre-purchasing tickets is that it does greatly limit your flexibility should you arrive at your destination and realize there's something, you know, a few cities away that would be really cool to see. You may or may not be able to go do that unless you're willing to pay some extra money. Now that you know the basic methods for getting around Europe, let's dive into just a few quick tips that will make your travel experience easier and just some things that I wish I had known before I got started. So first of all, trains in Europe use military time. So if you're unfamiliar with military time, something you might wanna do a few weeks in advance to your trip is maybe just change the clock on your phone to military time so you start to get used to it and it'll make things a little bit easier for you in the train stations as you're getting around. One of my big concerns before going to Europe was that I might not be able to figure out the train timetables that they use there. But I'm happy to report that there is some method to the madness and that they're fairly easy to get the hang of just as you become more familiar with them. If you up going with a pass. They'll give you detailed instructions how to read those train timetables so you can get where you need to go. In addition, um, there are tons of apps these days that can help you with the train's timetables. So I recommend looking into those. I know for Eurail, Eurail has their very own app that has information about the different train schedules that makes it super easy to use there's still times when it'll just be confusing for one reason or another. So in those instances, that's a great opportunity to maybe practice, you know, the language you've been learning or just ask a local for help. I did that tons of times on my trips and people were always willing to help point me in the right direction. Something else that I wish I knew, if you have a train pass, those don't work for all of the trains that you'll come across. So those don't work for like smaller trams and they also don't work for subway systems that you might come across in the bigger cities. I learned that the hard way in Switzerland when I quickly jumped onto a tram because I thought my pass would be good for it and it wasn't. And so I ended up having to pay like eight euros or so for the tram I was on, which wasn't that big of a deal, but still, it would have been nice to know in advance that my pass wasn't good for that. Another tip for traveling Europe by train is to mind your belongings in the train stations. So train stations in Europe are typically busy hubs where tons of tourists come through, making them an ideal place for pickpockets, to come and snatch goods when people aren't paying attention. I recommend getting some type of bag that you can wear in front of you that you can place your most valuable things in. For my trip, I just had a messenger bag that I'd wear in front of me and I'd usually just keep my arm over it in crowds just to ensure that I'm not gonna lose my passport or all my money. So there were a few times on my trip when I arrived in a city a bit later at night and the city wasn't exactly the safest place. It's not a good idea to place yourself in a situation where you have to wander around not really knowing where you're going late at night in a, a city that may or may not be safe. So do your research beforehand. Make sure you have an understanding of the area that you're gonna be arriving at. Also, just remember when the sun will be going down at that area so that you can plan accordingly and stay as safe as possible. Another thing you'll wanna remember if you have a long day of train travel planned is to keep some food handy. There were a few times when I was first starting out on my trip that I uh, would end up being on a train for hours without anything to eat and I would get super hungry. At most stops there are small vending machines with like pre-made sandwiches and stuff in them that you can get. You can save a little bit of money if you plan ahead and stop by a local grocery store and get some food for your trip. Many of the trains in Europe don't have Wi-Fi 
And so if you're used to having internet, this can be pretty painful when you're forced to sit on a train for all day. And so what I recommend is preloading a bunch of audiobooks, books, or music onto your device. That way you have something to do while you're traveling. I made the mistake of only bringing a very limited amount of music with me for many of my long train rides. So I ended up listening to the same album like over and over and over again. Another good idea when you're traveling by trains is just to take advantage of the time that you have on them to get some sleep. By resting on the trains, you ensure that you have tons of energy when you do finally reach your destination, which will allow you to have more fun um, when you finally do get to explore where you're going. I know this video is about traveling Europe by train, but I just wanted to quickly mention, sometimes traveling by plane might actually be the better option for you. If you have a very limited amount of time that you can travel and the destinations that you wanna visit are very far apart from one another, then it can be frustrating for you to have to sit on a train all day when you only have three or four days to travel to begin with. It may be a little more expensive, but in the end, you'll end up having more time to do what you really came to do in the first place. Please hit the subscribe button if this information was helpful for you. If you have any questions about traveling Europe by train, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And if you have any tips, if you've been to Europe and you've traveled by train, let me know what your best tips are as well in the comments. But thank you guys for watching and happy travels.